Welcome to 3 Minutes of History. I'm your future history teacher, Chris Oxenford, and let's get started. The Fourth Congress of the United States is exercising one of its constitutional duties, the ratification of treaties. Approval of a treaty requires a two-thirds majority, and the treaty before the Congress is so controversial that it might fail to achieve that bar, despite the support of President George Washington himself. Called the Jay Treaty, or Jay's Treaty, the treaty was a compromise worked out between Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court, John Jay, and Foreign Secretary of the United Kingdom of Great Britain, William Grenville. Jay had been dispatched to London in 1794 in an attempt to patch up serious disputes that were bringing the United States and the United Kingdom to the verge of war. Because of the ongoing wars of the French Revolution, Britain had impressed sailors from the United States Merchant Marine into the Royal Navy. It had continued to occupy forts in Michigan and the Midwest that should have been handed over to the United States under the Treaty of Paris, and it continued to put barriers and tariffs on American trade goods. Jay was an experienced lawyer and negotiator. Under the Articles of Confederation, he had served as Secretary of Foreign Affairs and helped the young United States to secure recognition of its independence. Jay was also one of the three authors of the Federalist Papers, along with his political ally and fellow New Yorker, Alexander Hamilton, and Virginian James Madison. However, his positions in the negotiations in 1794 was not a strong one. The newly independent United States had little that it could offer or threaten Great Britain with. Despite this limitation, Jay managed to negotiate a treaty that would get Britain to cede the forts in the Northwest Territory and grant the United States improved trade status. But all the other major issues, including the impressment of U.S. sailors and the United States border with Canada, would be held for international arbitration. When word of the specifics of Jay's treaty was returned to the United States, the treaty would prove to be immensely unpopular. The treaty was being debated in a nation that was intensely polarized between two opposing political factions, led by two diametrically opposed foes, Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson. Alexander Hamilton was an immigrant from the island of St. Thomas in the Caribbean. He had risen to prominence by serving as an aide to General Washington during the American Revolution. Washington had personally chosen him to serve as Secretary of the Treasury. Hamilton favored a strong central government, a financial system based on trade and credit. He favored the interests of the urban elite, and he favored improving relations with the United Kingdom. It was Hamilton who had drafted the proposals that Jay would carry to London. Opposing Hamilton was Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson was a Virginian and a planter. He favored a smaller, more limited central government, believing strongly that the nation should be made up not of an urban elite, but of small farmers and planters, with an economy that was based in agriculture, and believed that it was revolutionary France, with whom the U.S. was already allied during the Revolution, and where Jefferson had spent several years that the United States should remain close to. As such, he opposed any treaty with the United Kingdom. The debate between the two factions was intense, with both sides mobilizing their resources, speakers and newspapers to try and convert popular opinion to support their viewpoints. The intensity of the debate led the two men and their allies to organize into formal political parties, the Federalists, led by Alexander Hamilton, and the Democratic Republicans, led by Thomas Jefferson. The treaty was so controversial that Jay claimed he could have walked from one end of the country to the other by the light of bonfires burning him in effigy. Despite this public outcry, Washington threw his enormous prestige behind the treaty. This was both because he believed that the United States needed peace with Great Britain and because he was a supporter of Hamilton. Between the support of the two men, Hamilton and Washington, the pressure on the Senate to pass the treaty was enormous. Washington's prestige was barely enough, however. A requiring a two-thirds to majority to become law, the Jay Treaty passed the United States Senate by a vote of 20 to 10, just one vote shy of failing. 
Washington put it into effect shortly after it passed. The ratification of the Jay Treaty set the stage for the contentious election of 1796, which pitted the Federalists, led by Vice President John Adams, against the Democratic Republicans, led by Jefferson. Jefferson used the treaty as a campaign issue, claiming it showed that Adams and the Federalists were aristocratic traitors trying to sell the United States back to Britain. Despite this, Adams would be narrowly elected as the first formally Federalist president, with Jefferson forced into the role of vice president. John Jay himself would be elected governor of New York State and then retire in 1801, continuing to farm for the remainder of his life. He died in 1829 after what was probably a stroke. This has been Three Minutes of History. I'm Chris Oxenford. Thank you for joining me.